How's it going guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros. And the most frequent question we get on this channel is a lot of people asking us, is this build going to do good? Is this build going to do good? We get a lot of comments in the videos that we create saying, is this a really good PC build? And honestly, I look at these PC builds and for the most part, they are pretty decent. However, there is a common misconception between all these people. A lot of people do not know specifically what to look for in certain PC components. So in this video, I'm going to be starting a series to where I go over each individual component of the PC, GPU, CPU, hard drive, and basically give a rundown of what exactly you need to look for when getting these components. I think it's going to be an interesting series and very informative. So without further ado, let's roll that intro. Alright guys, for the very first episode, we're going to be doing graphics cards. Now graphics cards are a component that are a main feature in gaming PCs. Nowadays, PC games are mainly taking advantage of graphics card hardware, which is really not a surprise. It's the main component for putting out video to your display and generating all the graphics for your video games. So, graphics cards. The main issue that's going on is a lot of people think that they have to get the 980 Ti, the uh, GTX Titan, and all those really high-end GPUs. In all honesty, yes, those are very nice GPUs, but really they're not required for a gaming PC nowadays. When you think of gaming PC, I know a lot of people think of the latest and greatest. A gaming PC that plays at 4K or 1440p, maxed out 120 plus FPS, you know, all the 144 hertz displays. That kind of stuff is really nice, but it's not what you need to be looking for. If you were just coming from a console, you could easily spend $500 on a gaming PC and get a graphics card that's really decent and max out games at 1080p and have a great upgrade from your Xbox One and PS4. Yes, at only $500 you can definitely get that experience. So let's do a rundown real quick. There's a lot of graphics cards out there that you can really get your hands on at a very decent price. Yes, there are the 980Ti's, the 970's, and the GTX Titan X, and all those sorts of graphics cards out there, which, yes, will do really good performance, but for the value at being at $600 plus, it's not going to fit into a budget that's really affordable for you. So, do not skimp out on the CPU first off. That's a whole other video that we'll definitely get into, but when you're picking your graphics card, don't skimp out on your CPU just to get a higher-end graphics card. It's not worth it. So for a graphics card, I suggest the price performance ratio sweet spot, which is basically a price anywhere between $100 and $200. Any graphics card in that area, you're getting the most FPS for your dollar, and it really is an awesome value to pick up a card at that price range. For example, there are graphics cards like the R7 370, I'm assuming that's the variation of the card. We have the R7 370, the 750 Ti, we have, I'm just rambling these off my head because I've heard a lot about them. And also you can honestly pick up an R9 380 for a little bit above $200, sometimes below. It's like at like 180, but that's one car that I highly recommend for great price performance. The R9 380 is a graphics card Jackson uses and it's a very powerful card. You're going to want to pick up the high VRAM model though, because VRAM is something that you also have to factor in when you're getting a graphics card. VRAM, for people who don't understand, is not just your standard computer RAM, not the RAM that you put in your system from Kingston Rip Jaws and that you use for storing uh, temporary memory. VRAM is something that is built into your graphics card and it allows for the components to be loaded into it and then dumped out when it's not needed. It's like a buffer. It allows for the textures and a lot of files to get in and be held for them to get processed and then created onto your screen. So this VRAM, VRAM is very important nowadays in high-end AAA titles. We have the Battlefield 4s, we have the Witcher 3, we have all these new games that are out and really take advantage of a lot of VRAM. Back in the day, you could get away with one gig of VRAM or maybe even 512 megabytes of VRAM because there was not a lot of textures in games. But then with recent games like Skyrim coming out with a bunch of texture mods, VRAM usage has been like overloaded and it really makes a big difference to have a lot of VRAM on your card. Yes, if you're playing titles like TF2, CSGO, and all the basic things, you could get away with one gig of VRAM, no issues at all. 
However, four gigs or even two gigs is kind of the norm and the standard that you need to go with for VRAM nowadays. If you don't have, if you have less than two gigs and you try to play some of these titles, your frame rates are gonna be a lot less than you think they're gonna be. And even with two gigs, there's some games that require at least four gigs of VRAM to even run properly. I know with me, I was trying to play Call of Duty Advanced Warfare back in the day, which yeah, was an okay title, but with my R9 270X with only two gigs of VRAM, I was not able to get out the frame rates that I wanted. It was struggling like really hard, and that graphics card was no slouch back in, uh, was this about a year ago? That graphics card is no slouch, but it was really having issues with that title. And yeah, the R9 270X is a great card. It's still a very good 1080p card, but there are games that it can't max out. And you have to be realistic. That gets right into my other point. You're getting a graphics card at $100 to $200. Be very realistic. If you want something that plays 1080p titles, go for it. Get that and you'll be able to max out most titles. And the keyword is most. You're not gonna be able to max out every single game. In, in all honesty, you don't need to max out every title. You got uber sampling and all those things that are optional settings that you really don't need to enable. And that's something that you really should look into also, which I might do a separate video on, is all those extra settings in your games that you really do not need at all. They're all extra and just, just crazy sampling and all these different textures or just stuff that gamer game developers throw into their game titles just to make it last longer honestly for example rise of the tomb raider is a title that's out nowadays and even the highest end hardware the titan x's and 980 ti's they can't even max out that title anymore and that's for good reason they want their title to be something that lasts into the future and eventually future graphics hardware can get their hands on and be able to beat so again, being realistic is a big key when getting a graphics card. Don't expect to max out titles whenever you get your first graphics card. Don't expect to do certain things unless you're willing to spend a pretty penny on it. Yes, this seems kind of contradicting because I recommend you go for $100 or $200 as the price range and I really don't think you're gonna max out every single title. But in all honesty, that's the best route to go if you're going for a gaming PC, for your very first gaming PC. If you're gonna upgrade and you really know that you wanna play that 1440p and 4K and you can really afford it, make sure you're not doing it just to skimp out on the CPU because the CPU will be a major bottleneck, which bottlenecking will be something I definitely get into in another video. But really, you don't wanna skimp out on other components just for one single component. And that will be a trend that you see throughout this video and basically this whole series. So in reality, the graphics card is a very important component, but it really isn't something that demands all your money. All your money at all, like it will just make your system so crippled in certain areas. You don't wanna cripple your CPU, you don't wanna cripple your graphics card, you don't wanna cripple your motherboard, you don't wanna cripple anything because it will lead to very bad stability in your overall system. So in reality and in conclusion, I really wanna say that the graphics card is a very vital part of your gaming PC. But in all honesty, don't spend all your pretty pennies on the graphics card. You could go with something like an R9 380. You can go with something like maybe even R9 390, which is, yes, a $300 card, but it's still half the price of a, what, 980 Ti? And doing so will allow you to save more money and put it in an awesome CPU, which will be something that you really need to do because CPUs are a very vital part of this PC building era that's going on right now with cpus actually being used a lot in gaming using multi-threaded applications and you know everyone and their mother is trying to make youtube videos so it's always nice to have a good cpu so if you all want to hear more about cpus please hit the subscribe button hit a like leave a comment below and i will be back with the next episode on cpus um, and I really know this video was really just whoa out there because I'm kind of just rambling It's because this is the first time I've actually done a video without a script in a while So I'm kind of just rambling going off my mind I kind of want these videos to be about that model But if you all think that I should do these videos more script like leave a comment below. I'd love to hear that so Without further ado have a wonderful day